and you could w teach him how to deal with the hard things. I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, he maybe he will, but it's this. fine. I mean, he's Can a great guy. He stumbles yeah. across this. Maybe. He's like, oh, my God, well, maybe, they're talking but, about me right now. In well, and that's the thing. When you date somebody like me, yeah, yeah I'm going to talk about uh -huh. my personal life. I mean, not everything, but there will be conversations like this. Sure. So, yeah. Hi, this is Kara. Welcome to Really Famous, where you get to know your favorite celebs on a super intimate level because I was a therapist and that's just how I roll. Ready to get to know Mauricio Martinez on a totally different level, very personal. He shares stories about his four exes and some may surprise you. Let's do it. So what about the partners over the years? So exes, partners, how? Well, I'm very good friends with two of my exes oh. who are like the most important relationships I've had. I've had, I want to say four, I'm going to get in, I'm going to trouble if they see this, but I want to say four real relationships, like long committed, you know, Maybe. I've been married. Okay. And I've been engaged. Um, I was engaged to a woman back in 2004 in Mexico, Lisette. She's the woman of my life because she's literally the only woman I've, <laughs> I've been with in my life. But I love her to this day. You and, do. And um, we're very, very, very close. And I adore her. It didn't work out, obviously. But afterwards, she, she got married. She's a mom. And she has a great life. But we're, we have that um, rapport to mm -hmm, this day. And connection. that respect. And that uh -huh. we, talk, we talk about it. Because she's also a performer. And she like, does TV and film and music in Mexico. And um, they ask her about me every now and then. And oh, every time right. she talks about me is like with a big smile and she says beautiful things. And likewise, you know, whenever they ask me about her, it's like, she's the woman of my life. What what can yeah. I say? Like, I love her. Like, So that's really nice. But that, so what, what yeah. happened? What was it? What did you? Well, she's, I firmly believe she's five years older than me. I firmly believe, first of all, that women mature faster than men. I think uh -huh. I know it for a fact. I was raised by women. Um, you know, uh, she was... 30 when we met and I was 25 I was coming straight out of Mexican Idol we both were starring in Saturday Night Fever uh, she was she had been in the business for 20 years she started as a kid and she was literally coming out of a divorce and I was just 25 straight out of like the the contest the TV show like wanting to be a star just so young and so eager la, la, la. and I fell madly in love with her but I wanted other things you know and she said after two years, two and a half years of a very happy, beautiful relationship, we loved our each other's family. It was great. But then she's like, you know what? I, I don't want to cut your wings. You're young still. You should live. And she literally said, you should fly. Oh, wow. I want to settle down. I'm 33, 34. I want to have kids, want to get married. And you, I, don't, I would never do that to you. You're too young. And she, I was in Mexico, and she knew that I, New York was like, at the back of my head, oh, and she's like, "You gotta go to Broadway. You gotta go to New York. You gotta, you gotta live." And I don't want to go there. I don't even speak English. You know, mm -hmm. she's like, "I, my life is here." Like so. Wow, she's really special. So again, you you're a good judge of character. Yeah, she I is, stand by that observation. She's really I made special. A while ago. Yeah, yeah. She's wonderful, and to this day, she's a dear, dear, dear friend. One of the most important okay. people in my life. So then, and then the other Emilio. Three. Emilio's my ex. Okay. My ex husband. We got married. We we're together for seven and a half years. And again, one of my, I mean, he's one of the first phone calls. If anything happens to me to this day, he's one of the first phone calls. You know, if I have like five phone calls, let's say he's probably number three after my mom. And, you know, like, okay. so because um, he became a mentor in my life. He's 15 years senior, my senior. And again, he taught me a lot about my life, a lot about um, accepting who I was. And my sexuality, too. And, like, because I thought I was bi for a second. And then I was, like... And he really taught me how to be a proud gay man. And just... he, I, I grew a lot with him. And we shared beautiful things together. And I, I said yes. So he proposed the first time I was diagnosed with cancer. Right before I went into surgery, he proposed. And I said yes. Yes. And he's wonderful. I love him. But as we know stories sometimes love trumps transforms itself it mm -hmm. didn't disappear but it just transformed into, into something else you know and again 
my life started going this way mm -hmm. and his life started mm -hmm. going that way and so i was the one apart. who said you know what i think we should you know i don't i don't i don't think it's fair for me to stay mm -hmm. um we he went through two of my cancer battles with me and that was hard for me i was watching um it's gonna be it sound uh, uh, uh shallow as a shallow reference but it's not it's it's deeper than it seems sex in the city um how uh, there's a scene where uh carrie and samantha and the other two girls are talking about samantha uh not sure and not being sure whether she wants to stay with smith okay because she went through cancer and she literally says um i can't leave him she he stayed with me through cancer and carrie says samantha you just compared your relationship to chemo Oh, okay, yeah. And when I saw that, I went, wow. You know, that's, right. you know, I, I... That's very interesting, yeah. And it really, I was like, Struck wow. Chord, yeah. yeah, it did. Uh -huh. I saw the scene and I was like, damn, you're so right. Like, So that was airing at the time? So it was like, you would, yeah. is that kind of what... No, it was, I was think... It a wake up call? Or you saw that later? I don't know if it's, that's in the movie. I think that's in the movie. Oh, okay. In the first movie, I think, right? I think. I don't remember. I think it's in a movie, not in the TV show. Per okay, se. okay. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I get them confused. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, I can't. They, they all blur. I mean, I just now. know the second movie is the one where they went to like Abu Dhabi or whatever. Right. But the first movie and like season four and five. Are, I, I. And you I, were in one episode. I was an extra. You were an extra. <laughs> in season two. Which episode? You can see. I don't know the episode, but I'm in a party where Carrie uh, sees Big with Natasha. Uh, like at the Hamptons or something, okay. which was not the Hamptons. It was like a beach in Jersey. <laughs> uh, they paid me a hundred dollars the hour, the day to be an extra. I did not like it. I didn't like being extra. Uh, um, I didn't like it. I was too young. I was 19, uh -huh. 20, straight out of school. Um, Do you feel like cattle or something? Yeah, I did. Just didn't like the experience. I was like, no, I, I, I want to be there. Yeah, like I want to be doing what they're doing, mm -hmm, you know. And mm -hmm. later, three. Literally three years later, I was shooting uh, as a lead. I was doing a soap opera in Mexico, and and I, I saw the extras, and I I would, I would make it a point to like go and talk to them and That's sit down because nice. I, I was like, I know what mm -hmm. it feels like, yeah, um, to be like, sort of forgotten, sure. and like you get another type of food, and you're like in another like. Yeah. Yeah, like lower level. Yeah. You're like in the basement and or that's something. That's not okay. Yeah, for me, yeah. You know? That's I, nice I, that you took that in there. Yeah. Yes. And I became friends with some. Like, oh, cause, nice. Because yeah. it was a soap opera uh, um, base, loosely based on fame. So it was like a musical theater. Well, not musical theater, but like performing arts high school. Okay. So there was like a lot of dancers. Like, so it, there was like a lot of uh, extras. Mm -hmm. And we like became friends because we were like shooting at the same time as everybody else for like months and months and months. So, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Sometimes I meet people. I'm like, I wish I worked with this person because I feel like we would naturally become friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, you would be so good to be working with. I feel like no well, you never what know. Your Hopefully we was. will. Yes. Maybe well, you never know. Yeah. I would like to. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back to your two. So the other two. Okay. The uh, well, the other two. Uh, the first one I haven't uh, was my the first love of my life. I'm. I I want to say we're we're not close, but we're cordial to each other. Uh, okay. And um, he still lives in New York. He's older than me, but he was my first first love, and that was that was when I was twenty here in New York. He broke my heart though. But then years later, we reconnected. Nothing happened, but we reconnected as mm -hmm. friends. And yeah, we're acquaintances, and and oh, but but we're not really that close. And the fourth one, um, it's it's uh, he's a journalist here in New York, but but we haven't seen each other since we broke up. Oh, that's well, the first the time I haven't seen or been in touch with and like sort of like completely caught off like uh, uh, i don't know if it's oh. an american thing but, uh, uh, oh I, so everybody nobody else was american no well so, no the first one is but but or also italian so okay but yeah i don't know so this is happened? the first time in my life where it's like like that was over. that well he broke up with me on an email oh. <laughs> That's really crummy. I know. Uh, I know. So was it? It looked good on paper. I mean, he's a he's a great guy. He um, didn't break your heart then. Like he did. No, he, he did. did. And I was going through a lot, and he wasn't ready for it. Um, I was. That's because I. That's we met during my last show uh, on Broadway, and we fell in love and we started dating long distance. But then I went through like depression and all that, and you know when people are not. Mm -hmm ready for that mm -hmm. you know they don't know what to 
you know, what how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so we sort of looked good on paper, you know. Yeah. Uh, we could be like a great couple at the red carpet, but not, you know. Um, so when things he, got real, real, I was like, uh, I need you by my side. But he wasn't really um, capable. He couldn't in that place. So. So is he older than you too, no, or no? He's a bit younger, but oh, like so he's four, the first one. Years? He's the who's first one younger. Younger, I know. So and we're on to something here. I mean, you know that already, but <laughs> yes. maybe right, maybe yeah. maybe older is better though. Yes, for I you, think so too. You know. I That's, think so too. Yeah, because even though you say like, okay, well, women generally may mature. Well, that would just be Lisette. That's her name, right? Lisette. Yeah. Right. Um, but it seems like you are, you know, if you are attracted to the older people, I've always have. Yeah, like there's something about you. That's, but I also know that I am getting older, so that I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe. I mean, I, I'm, I've gone on t out to dates and stuff, and I'm like, oh well, now I'm older than you, but like maybe three, four years. But it's like, it's gonna be more common now. Because I'm 43, I'm not the youngest one in the room anymore. Uh -huh. Like there was a certain part of a stage in my life where I was always like the youngest one mm -hmm. in the room. Like now I'm like, no, they're even in shows. I'm like, oh, I'm like with 30 year olds and 32 year olds and 22 year olds. And oh, I'm the old one, you know. So uh, so I think maybe I don't yeah. know. Who knows? Mm -hmm, I'm not right. really looking for it, though, which is. Which is a great place to be. I'm not really looking for love right now. Yeah, like, you're looking. You have yourself right now. Yeah, if it in happens, a good way. great. Yeah, but if it doesn't, I'm literally fine. I've been married. I mean, I yeah, I'm fine. But yeah, the last one really, the last one really hurt because of how shut down I was. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. um, and I, I had never dealt with that. I've always been in communication. Because I, I firmly believe, I don't know if it's a culture thing, like a Latin thing, but it's, I think it's a heart thing. Um, when somebody has been in your life, in a meaningful, as a meaningful part of your life, mm -hmm. and the relationship doesn't work, they can still be part of your life. You know, what can you, like, you didn't kill anyone. You, did, you know what I mean? Like, but I think there's this, idea of like shut down like just close and not never speak to that person mm -hmm. again and it's like why like i don't know i don't i don't believe yeah, in that I think me it dep right it depends me. on it also depends on what the relationship yeah. went through right if there was yeah. some serious hurt if somebody Maybe. hurt another yeah. one i mean another person yeah. like that might be a little bit different for them to figure out like it's better yeah. they're better off just not even you know, having communication with the person if they were really hurt by that person over and over again. Like, it depends yeah. on how healthy the relationship was to begin yeah. with. So if you weren't... So I feel like your relationships were all pretty darn healthy. Very healthy. That's the thing. So that's yeah. another reason why you can do that. Yeah. More easily. And we went to real... Like, we went through... Like, even the fourth time I had cancer, Lisette uh -huh. came to LA with my mom and took care of me. Like, you know what I mean? Like That's amazing. As opposed yeah. to the guy that i was dating right who stayed in new york and Couldn't never went be to there when it was actually my you were going ex stuff. fiance my ex-girlfriend came to see me so that was i mean i the red flags were all there always there so why did you go out with him in the first place well no i had al i was already with but i guess the red flags in that respect were mm -hmm. kind of there and i ignore them no I, well i did but i also was like i had faith because i saw potential i saw a good heart and a good person there but just oh that's the old i know i can he can, he might change thought i know that usually See? doesn't work out or i can change him was there some of that probably uh -huh, uh -huh. Can look people him. can change by the way yeah because i was the first real relationship uh -huh. like oh. that he had so i was like maybe i'll maybe i'll you know yeah. um this is how relationships are like this is but then yeah. I found out, well, no, you don't really want this. You want to have like a single man's life and also have a boyfriend. That doesn't work. Not with right. me. Like, no, right. <laughs> not no. with a Latin man. <laughs> you get married, basically, you know. And but yeah, but it was going really well. Like I was introduced to the, all the family like and um. friends and like it was and it was like public. And like I was like, OK, this is. But all of a sudden, boop. And in a moment where I was like needing somebody by my side so it was yeah it was yeah that's a really a it bummer. was it was hard mm -hmm. but i didn't blame it was it happened but of course i was of course i was hurt and angry for a while but then yeah but i haven't seen him again
Yeah, you'll run into him at some. Of course, point. yeah. Is he in the same circles as you? Well, well not so, well. He works in the same industry. He's uh, journalist, so I mean, oh, he's right. bound to yeah. interview me at some point. I think, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> if that I will open, be interesting. A, if I open a new Broadway show, hopefully, I mean, on a red carpet or something, because yeah, that's what he does. For oh, a living, he so. does red carpet interviews. Yeah. Oh, so you will see him yeah. again. <laughs> And he's going to know. Only for Broadway, though, yeah. Like, you won't necessarily know, but he'll know ahead of time when he's like, oh, I'm going to the red carpet tonight. <laughs> and I know who I'm going to be. And I'm amazed that we haven't really, but the pandemic well, hit. Well, the so pandemic, yeah. yeah. We haven't really yeah, yeah well, seen each other. At some, so. some point, I think. But I mean, he was a, uh, an important part of my life. Yeah. And no hard feelings. And God bless but you. And, and I hope you're, you're happy. you're in a good place. Yeah, and you're in a yeah. good place now. And you, you're only 43. There are a lot. I mean, there are already yeah. four significant relationships you've had yes. in your life. By 43. I know. So I can only imagine. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be four. There's going to be a lot of number. Maybe there's one number. Or Maybe one two. more. I say. Do you want there to be one more? Because of my age? Yeah. I mean, I'm talking like I'm an 85-year-old man. Yeah, that's but what's no. funny. You're but 43. I really, if I find someone, may that person be the one. Like, I can't fool around. Like, come on. I'm 43. 43 is like an age where, like, settle down. If you're going to be with me, be with me. You know? Yeah. That's how I, that's what I think. Uh-huh. You know? Uh -huh. So I think somebody mature. Yes. Well, you need somebody mature. Yeah. And if not in years, in mind. Yeah. And who understands yeah. my way of life, my schedules. Yeah. That I kiss other people for a living sometimes. Right. And get to fall in love with people. Mm -hmm. Fake fall in love. Like, things like that. And the scheduling. Like, you can't really make... Um, a lot of promises because yeah. of your job, right? Like you can't go to birthdays, you can't go to weddings, you can't go to sometimes because of your career, because you're doing a show, because you're taping a movie, because you're um, doing, you know, yeah. concerts. But it's, and, those are just yeah. the things, you know, the real things are the big things. Yes, and especially for me, someone like me who like, I'm a, I'm a cancer survivor, so I need somebody to hold my hand while mm -hmm. I go to chemo. Yes. It's as simple as that, but it's hard. Because people are afraid of that. Some people are afraid of that. So they just don't, they don't, um, they don't want to deal with that. Or they don't know how to deal with that. Yeah, you but know? It, yes, it's absolutely true. But in yeah. that case, like you can help somebody help you uh, work through it and work through their fear of it. And you that's know what why I, mean? I stayed with the other one. Yes. For except, a little while. Except you, the foundation has to be stronger. Yeah. You know what I mean? For that, for you to. Because I thought, okay, that. okay, uh, well, let me explain. This is how. Yeah. But then I was like, no. But no, because is... without the strong foundation, the really strong yeah. foundation, like you already thought, went into it thinking, you know, he has potential. But the potential, it's about what's who he is today. Right. You know, if who he was today was really solid, at least with you, then you could w teach him how to deal with the hard things. I hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, he maybe he will, but it's this. fine. I mean, he's Can a great guy. He it. stumbles yeah. across this. Maybe. He's like, oh, my God, well, maybe, they're talking but, about me right now. Well, and that's the thing. When you date somebody like me, yeah, yeah I'm going to talk about uh -huh. my personal life. I mean, not everything, but there will be conversations like this. Sure. So, yeah. So just know that because that that's that's part of my life. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that is, that's what you're going to so, get. So like, you know, yeah. I mean, he didn't come walk in and meet you when you were in, and like, I'm not an saying unknown. any names, but, <laughs> but yeah, Maybe I mean, that's literally how like... we met, like through an inter oh, interview, oh, oh, like he oh, was you and I was, spark. yeah, uh -huh. that's where the spark happened. Yeah. So very interesting. Well, if, <laughs> if you're watching, God very bless. interesting. <laughs> It sounds like you had a really interesting experience. <laughs> that was Mauricio Martinez. Yes, he gets into more. We talk about how he knew he just had to make it big in New York City and what he did to make it happen. Plus, we talk about his experiences with cancer. He's had it four times and how it led to depression and anxiety. So we get into all that in the other parts of this talk. I put links to each part. There are three total in the description below. So check it out, click on the links, and I'll see you in the next videos. Just had a successful taping. We're at the Westgate and saying uh, goodbye for now. <laughs>